Okay, let's start with lesson one for quadratic equations. You know, Newton's identity. You know, in the previous lesson, we look at uh, you know the sum and the product of the roots of quadratics, and how it is related to the quadratic equation coefficients, right? So today we're going to answer the question. You know, given the two roots x1, x2 of the quadratic equations here. Right. And uh, what is the sum of the higher powers? Right. For example, um, x1 cubed plus x2 cubed, or in general to the nth power, you know, what is the value in terms of the coefficient, of course. So Newton looked at this problem and then he figured out that uh, we don't have to solve for the rules, but we can, you know, simply from the coefficient of the um, polynomial. Um, we can um, answer you know, the question. All right, let's look at it. So um, for some notation purpose, we're going to use notation Sn here, meaning you know, for the nth power, for example, S1 would be S1 would, would be the uh, first power, which is x1 plus x2. In this case, we know it's negative b, right? So, so what is x s two, all right? So which is x one square plus x two square? So how do we find out from only look at the b and c, the two coefficients, right? And uh, when you think about it using some algebra, you can say this is actually x one plus x two square. Um, but then you have some extra terms here, so you need to subtract the extra term, which is 2x1, x2, all right? Now, for x1, x2, x1 plus x1, this is s1 squared, right? This is s1 squared, right? So, which is, in this case, would it be negative b squared? is b squared, right? Minus 2, um, x1 times x2, which is c here, all right? So, and then, now, what is S3 then? S3 equal x1 to the third plus x2 to the third. All right. How do we express in terms of B and C? Of course, we're going to use the previous results, if at all possible. You notice that x1 squared plus x2 square, if you multiply with x1 plus x2, then you you'll get uh, the cubic terms. All right, so let's see, which is s2, right, s2, right, but then I need to times x1 plus x2, right. But then you realize this one would have some extra terms, you need to subtract the extra term. The extra term would be the, the, the cross in the product, which is you need minus x1 times x2 square and minus x2 times x1 square, right? So here, if you continue the process, you notice that this is elective b. So you're going you're gonna to be the elective b s2, right? And then you need the minus, you have common factor x1, x2, and then x1 plus x2, right? So you know that this is actually s1. And this is actually, you know, this is equal to C. So it's equal to elective B S2 minus C S1. Now, in general, we say that uh, what is the relationship between Xn, sorry, not Sn, Sn, right? So in general, in general, right? What is Sn, which is x1 to the nth power plus x2 to the nth power? So you, again, you're going to use the previous sum, which is x1 to the n minus 1th power plus x2 to the n minus 1th power. You try to times x1 plus x2. Now, similarly, you're going to subtract the extra term here, the cross product term, right? So if you if you do this, uh, you know, cross product, you 
the extra term is x1 times x2 to the n minus 1's power it minus x2 times x1 n minus 1's power all right so again when you try to write it again um okay the first one is this part is s n minus 1 times the plus the sum of the two roots is negative b here negative b and then you need minus x1 x2 common factor and then x1 to the m minus 2's power plus x2 to the m minus 2's power so in other words this is negative b times s m minus 1 minus c times s m minus 2 all right so it looks like that's a recurrence relationship we derived so in other words to go back to the original question right So we try to answer what is generic term Sn here. We have a recurrence relationship which is Sn right, would equal to S x1 to the nth power plus x2 to the nth power, but it is related to Sn minus 1 and n minus 2. Right? So Sn minus 1 minus C Sn minus 2. All right, so where x1, x2 are the roots, right? Roots of quadratic equation x squared plus bx plus c equal to zero. All right, so that's the main conclusion we have today. All right, so this is a recurrence relationship. All right. Um, so next time when somebody asks you to calculate, let's say s to the one hundredth power, right? What you can do is you can build up from the, you know, s one and then from x s two. Once you have two, you know, numbers s one s two, you can find s three. Once you have S3, from 2 and 3, you can find S5, and then so on and so forth, until you get S100, you know, the 100th power, right? So, now you may wonder, you know, how do we get this, uh, you know, relation? Just by looking at this simple algebra, right? Now it turns out that there's a simpler way to derive this, okay? So let's look at how to get this recurrence relationship you know from a different uh, direction All right let's try that so earlier we, we say that uh, we derived the uh, uh, recurrence relationship of sn right equal you know elective b s n minus one elective c s n minus two you know uh, for n equal um yeah, two three and so forth right so when you think about it so when s equal to two you know s2 equal negative b s1 minus c s0 what is s0 so s1 is actually in the x1 plus x2 right minus c s0 here is actually is we can define as 2 because x1 to the 0th power plus x2 to the 0th power is equal to, right? So this is s0, right? So this is a recurrence uh, relationship. We got it here, right? Now we're going to introduce a, a different proof. Okay, so again, remember that x1, x2 are the roots of x squared, right? So the equation here is uh, x squared plus bx plus c equal to 0, right? So x1 
x2 as a root of that. So in other words, x1, x2 satisfies this equation. From that equation, what we can do is if you try to look at the s n minus two s n plus two power, right? In other words, you try to find out what is x m plus two power, right? And how is it related to um, its lower powers, right? For this equation, let's let's call it equation number one, all right? So you multiply x to the nth power on the equation. So you multiply m u m means multiply by what? By x to the nth power to the equation. So what you get is plus b to the x n plus one's power, right? Plus c to the x to the nth power equal to zero, right? So you move this to the right. Right? Now, notice that both x1 and x2 satisfy this. So in other words, you can actually plug in x1. This will become this, right? Here, plug in x1. And you can plug in x2. Because they both satisfy the equation, right? Now, let's call this is 2, this is 3. If you 2 plus 3, what you get is the sum of this by definition is s n plus 2 would equal negative b. The sum of these two terms is actually s n plus 1. And the sum of these two terms is actually c s to the nth power. So that's exactly the recurrence relationship. All right? So let's look at the example here. This is a quadratic equation. You know, with this equation, we know that x1 plus x2 is equal to negative 1. x1 times x2 is equal to c, which is negative 1 here, negative 1. So what is s5? All right? So look at the recurrent recursion here, right? So recursion here is, in, in our case, b, right? So b equal negative 1, and d, uh, plus, plus 1, c equal negative 1. So we, we, you plug in this recursion relationship, what do we get is, so s m plus 2 is equal negative b, right? If, which is negative 1, s m plus 1, Minus c, c is negative 1, minus negative 1, uh, and then you get plus 1, and sn. In other words, that's equal sn minus sn plus 1, right? So let's, let's, let's look at that. So what is, this is s1, right? And then, you know, s0 equal 2. So what is s3 here? s3. Uh, sorry, S2. S2 would equal to S0 minus S1, right? So equal 2 minus S1 is negative 1, equals 3, okay? So S3 would equal to S1 minus S2, right? So S1 is negative 1, minus S2 is 3, that's negative 4, right? So S4 equal S2 minus S3. That would equal 3 minus negative 4. That would equal 7. And then S5 equal S3 minus F4 would equal negative 4 minus 7 equal negative 11. All right? So here the answer is negative 11. All right, so that's the answer. All right, 
So that's it for today. We're going to look at uh, uh, Newton's identity for um, cubics next time. And in the meantime, we can have uh, more examples um, um, of using this Newton's identity to solve other problems. All right? Okay, that's it for today. Thank you.